Good morning. Today is Saturday the 6th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Oh, happy coronation day, by the way. All right. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Mark chapter 9, verses 23 through 24. A father brings his son to Jesus to be healed. Like all good fathers, he wants his son to be made whole, but he is well aware of his child's, child's infirmities. As much as he wants to believe, he knows his faith needs to be stronger. He receives the Savior's affirmation and acts upon his particle of faith, pleading now that the Master will not only heal his child, but also strengthen his faith. The boy is healed. And perhaps just as remarkably, the belief of the Father is strengthened. Both healings are miracles. In keeping with scriptural injunction, the Father did not receive the blessing until after the trial of his faith. Nothing is withheld from those who abide the law of faith, which qualifies them to receive it. Nothing is impossible for the Lord or for those who believe. Okay, so... Today is Luke chapter 17, and uh, let's see, Jesus speaks of offenses, forgiveness, and faith. Even the faith, even the faithful are unprofitable servants, ten lepers are healed, Jesus' discourse on the second coming. Now, again, he's speaking in parables, but... It gives a little more um, action. It seems like in the past couple of chapters, it's all parable and like not like he went here and he did this. Um, but he he goes over to uh, as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and there were ten lepers. Uh, we all know that story. And then. Uh, he says, remember Lot's wife, you know, no man putting his hand to the plow, no turning back, full disciple, all that stuff. Um, that's basically what happens in this chapter. Ooh. Okay. So let's see what Ludlow has to say. Cause we don't have Jeffrey for this. Um, For verses 5 through 6, we're talking about faith. This brief example of faith is included only in the account by Luke. The lectures on faith by the prophet Joseph Smith contain a great deal of information on this subject. These lectures teach that faith can be increased through several means. One, gaining a knowledge of God, that he actually exists and that he is our Heavenly Father. Two, gaining a correct understanding of the character and attributes of God. Three, learning the perfections of God and how he, we can strive for them for increasing our personal righteousness. The prophet Joseph Smith de then indicates some of the results of an increase in faith. When faith comes, it brings its train of attendance with it. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, gifts, wisdom, knowledge, miracles, healings, tongues, interpretation of tongues, etc., all these appear when faith appears on the earth and disappears when it disappears from the earth. For these are the effects of faith and always have and always will attend it. For where faith is, there will the knowledge of God be also with all things which pertain thereto, revelations, visions, and dreams, as well as every necessary thing in order that the possessor of faith may be perfected and obtain salvation. It almost seems too simple. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you have faith, then all these things will happen just so that you can obtain perfection, exaltation. It, it seems too good to be true. You know what I mean? Um, 
All you need is faith and then the rest falls into line. That that's literally it. But it seems it seems too easy, too simple. Um Okay. Ugh, holy cow. Okay, let's uh, read this one. There's a giant one in here, like a full page, and I'm not going to read it. But let's talk about verses 11 through 19. This account is contained primarily in Luke. We are told that the grateful one was a Samaritan, the lepers from which we infer that some or all of the others were Jews. Pained over the lack of gratitude on the part of the nine, Jesus exclaimed, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Uh, and to the cleansed Samaritan, still worshipping at his feet, the Lord says, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Doubtless the nine who came not back were obedient to the strict letter of the Lord's command, for he had told them to go to the priest. But their lack of gratitude and their failure to acknowledge the power of God in their restoration stand in unfavorable con contrast with the spirit of the one, and he was a Samaritan. The occurrence must have impressed the apostles as another evidence of acceptability and possible excellence on the part of aliens or the disparagement of Jews' claims of superiority irrespective of merit. That's an interesting line. Claims of superiority irrespective of merit. Do we behave thus? Okay. I'm going to leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the sixth. This one is for, oh, we've got two. Prisoners of war and for prisoners who have lost hope, both by BBC. O most merciful Father, who did send thy son Jesus Christ to proclaim deliverance to the captives and to set at liberty them that are bruised, remember, we pray, all who are in captivity, prisons, and bitter bondage. In loneliness, cheer them. In sickness, relieve them. And fill them continually with the hope of thy everlasting mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Almighty God, reveal the power of thy grace to all who are in despair, that those who have cleansed to, oh, that those who have ceased to hope may be brought even by despair to confide in thee who canst make all things new. All right. That was Luke chapter 17. And tomorrow we do John 11. We will see you then. Bye.